During the Second World War, the Germans would design and build a number of unusual aircraft, but few were as unorthodox and strange as the BV-141. In order to provide good visibility for its reconnaissance role, the crew gondola was completely separated from the aircraft's fuselage. While small numbers were built, during testing it was shown to have decent flying characteristics for its completely unconventional design. In 1937, the German Ministry of Aviation, or Reichsluftfahrtministerium, also known as RLM, issued a request to all German aircraft manufacturers for a new single-engine reconnaissance aircraft with provision for three crew members. Great attention was to be paid to having all-around good visibility. In addition, the aircraft would also have to act as a light attack and smokescreen laying aircraft. Three aircraft manufacturers responded to this request, Arado, Falkowulf, and Blum und Voss. Of these, Blum und Voss would submit the most distinctive design, to say the least. At first glance, the HA-141, as it was known at the start of the project, with HA designation standing for Hamburger Flugzeugbau, appears to be created by someone with no experience in aircraft design. In reality, the HA-141 was designed by Dr. Ing Richard Vaught, who was chief designer at Blom und Voss. The HA-141 was to have an unusual design, as the crew compartment consisted of a glazed gondola separate from the fuselage, with the actual fuselage containing one engine positioned on the port side of the wing. During his initial calculations, Dr. Vaught predicted, successfully, that the large crew gondola would act as a counterbalance to the engine. Dr. Vaught presented his plans to the Ministry of Aviation, but the officials were quite uninterested in such an unorthodox design. The story of the HA-141 would have ended there, but not willing to give up on the idea so easily, the Blom und Voss company financed the construction of the first prototype with its own funding. The prototype was completed in early 1938, with the name changed to BV-141. It made its maiden flight on the 25th of February. The flight went well without any major problems. The only issue was a slight oscillation of the landing gear. When it was presented to the Luftwaffe officials, they were surprised by its performance and ordered a production run of three more prototypes. The first prototype was marked as V0 and would later be rebuilt into the BV-141 V2 prototype and tested with the BMW 139F engine. The Luftwaffe officials only requested that the crew gondola be completely redesigned, internally and externally, to incorporate a larger working space and to be almost completely glazed, quite similar in design to the FW-189. The BV-141 V1, actually the second produced aircraft, was used to test the aircraft's general flight performance. The V3 made its first test flight on the 5th of October 1938 and was mainly used to test the BMW 132N engine. By 1939, an additional two more aircraft were built. The V4 that was to be sent to Eprobungstella testing center at Recklin had an accident during landing. After the repairs were made, it was finally flight tested at Recklin. It performed well and was liked by the pilots that had the chance to fly it. It also underwent a number of different weapons tests. Once all these tests were completed, the V4 prototype was chosen for modification into the first A series. After that, a small series of the A version, five aircraft in total, were built and used mostly for testing and development of new improvements at Recklin. Following these tests, the BV-141 received positive reports about its overall performance. There were also discussions about mass production. Despite this, the whole project was officially cancelled on the 4th of April 1940. The main reason was the Luftwaffe high officials' distrust of the design. Despite its good performance, the official reason for the rejection of the BV-141 was noted as underpowered. The BV-141 was a uniquely designed single-engine all-metal aircraft. The crew gondola and the fuselage containing the engine were completely separate from each other. Both were located slightly off-center of the wing. The crew gondola was placed on the right, with the engine on the left. The BV-141 was initially powered by an 865-horsepower BMW 132N radial engine. Behind the engine, a 490-liter fuel tank was placed. The tail design was changed during the BV-141's development. 
Initially, a standard tail design was used. This would later be replaced with a forward-leaning asymmetric tailplane offset to the port side. The unusual shape of the new tailplane had the intent of providing the rear gunner with the best available firing arc. It had only one elevator, which had a larger surface area than the previous model. The landing gear was more or less standard for its time. The front landing gear consisted of two large wheels that retracted outwards into the leading edges of the wings. To the rear, there was a small landing wheel that retracted back and slightly protruded out of the fuselage. The first crew gondola had fewer glazed surfaces than the later models. In general, it provided the crew with excellent front, rear, and right side view of the surroundings. The left view was partly obscured because of the engine. The armament consisted of four 7.92 mm machine guns. Two MG-17 forward-firing fixed machine guns were placed in the forward nacelle. These were operated by the pilot, who used a Revy aim sight. To the rear, one defensive MG-15 was placed in a small circular cupola atop the BV-141. The last MG-15 was positioned to the rear of the aircraft. The BV-141 could also carry four 50-kilogram bombs. The pilot was positioned on the left side of the englazed nose of the gondola. Next to him was the position of the observer, who also acted as bombardier in case the BV-141 was used for ground attack. The third crew member operated the rear defensive machine gun. With the cancellation of the BV-141A series due to allegedly poor engine performance, Dr. Vaught immediately began working on an improved version. In order to address the concerns made by the Luftwaffe regarding its engine, the Blomenboss designers decided to use a stronger 1500 horsepower BMW 801A engine. Unbeknownst to them, this decision would actually doom the whole project. With the new engine, other changes to the overall design had to be made. The wings had to be reinforced and their span increased to 17.46 meters. The fuselage's tail design was also changed. The landing gear was also improved by adding much stronger tail gear wheels. All of these changes would lead to the development of the BV-141B series. The first mock-up was completed in February 1940. The first test flight was made on the 9th of January 1941. Almost immediately, the BV-141B aircraft proved to be plagued with many problems. The controls were difficult to use and the plane was prone to mechanical faults, especially regarding the landing gear and the hydraulic systems. A huge issue was also created by the strong vibrations that occurred during test flights. The Luftwaffe's initial enthusiasm for this unusual aircraft quickly faded away. While the tests on the BV-141 would go on for a few more years, the FW-189 would be chosen instead. The last mention of the BV-141B-10 was dated in May of 1944, when it was used to tow another unusual design for Blomann Voss, the experimental BV-40 armed glider. The second BV-141B prototype was allocated to the Aufklärungsschule 1, or Reconnaissance Training Unit, in 1941 stationed at Grossenhain. It appears that its performance was deemed satisfactory, as more aircraft were requested in order to form at least one operational test unit for use on the Eastern Front. This was never implemented, mainly due to two reasons. The Blum und Voss factories were redirected to higher priority projects, and since the FW-189 was accepted for service, there was no real need for another reconnaissance aircraft. Some sources, like the book Aircraft of World War II by Chris Chant, mention that it was used on test flights over the UK and Soviet Union during its short operational service. The fate of the small number of BV-141s produced is not known. While the majority were scrapped, some managed to survive until war's end. One BV-141 was actually captured by the Soviet forces near the end of the war. This aircraft would be flight tested by the British pilot Captain Eric Brown. He was the chief test pilot of the Royal Aircraft Establishment at Farnborough. He was involved in a British project tasked with handing over German war research installations and interrogating technical personnel after the war. The single BV-141 was relocated to an auxiliary airfield near the town of Mason. When Captain Brown arrived, 
Soviet soldiers were already taking anything that was of use from the airfield and destroying everything else. After making a request to the Soviets to see if the aircraft could be flown, the Soviets approved. He was instructed to conduct a short flight around the airfield and to beware of possible engine malfunctions due to the general poor state of the aircraft. Captain Eric Brown described the flight of the BV-141 as follows. In retrospect, I really am glad to have had the unique opportunity of even a short flight in the BV-141B because it left me with the realization that it was not as bad an aircraft as the development history seemed to suggest. It had good, effective controls, although it had poor lateral stability, which would have made it unpleasant to fly in turbulence at low level. Maybe this, and the fact that its competitor, the FW-189, had excellent flying characteristics, were the real reasons for its demise before reaching operational production. How many BV-141s were produced is not clear in the sources. The numbers range from 13 to 18 aircraft being built. This includes at least three prototypes, five of the slightly improved A-series, and some ten B-series aircraft. The last BV-141B was delivered in mid-May 1943. The BV-141 initially demonstrated generally good flight characteristics, despite its unusual and radical design. The desire to further improve the flight performance and distrust by the Luftwaffe eventually killed the project. The extensive redesign of the BV-141B series simply had too many problems that were never completely resolved. The Luftwaffe was also reluctant to invest more time in it, especially as the more orthodox FW-189 was being introduced into service. In the end, while not put into production, the BV-141 was nevertheless an interesting design and certainly deserves a spot in aviation history. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching this plain encyclopedia voiced article. If you like this sort of content, please subscribe and hit the bell button. Likes and comments are also appreciated. Keep a keen eye out as we continue to roll out new aircraft. Find us on Facebook and Discord using the links in the description. And we hope to see you again next time.